Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Shan Stratton Live, also referred to now as Alkaline Life TV. My name is Shan Stratton and I host a live webinar every single Tuesday night so that we can spread the message of living a more alkaline, alkalizing lifestyle. See, I've been in this industry for almost 25 years. Over this period of time, I've had the, the great fortune of working with some of the greatest athletes and athletic organizations, but I've also had the great pleasure of working with general public, both young and old, male, female, doesn't matter, gender, race, anything else. The body functions primarily the same in every individual. And so one of the things that, that I've learned, especially over the last five and a half years, is that balancing the body's pH is one of the most important things that you can do to improve your own quality of life. So saying that, what I want to do tonight is we're launching what is called the digestion revolution. The reason we are is because in digestion, the inability to digest and or utilize the nutrients being consumed is one of the biggest problems facing us, not only in America, but around the world today. Indigestion, acid reflux, heartburn, uh, GERD's disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, that's what GERD stands for. Those issues are really acid related. And so knowing that acid and or alkalinity is what makes up our body's pH, it's important that people understand that, that balancing that pH to a slightly alkaline environment is very important. In fact, most people don't realize that when they're first born, your body is about 90% water. When a baby is brought into this world, that baby is about 90% of the water of the entire body is made up of water. And it is slightly alkaline. Well, once that point happens, we're born and then we start aging and we start living the American lifestyle for the most part. We start eating cooked and processed foods. We start doing things that, that might not be uh, as healthy as it should be, laying around or gaining weight, whatever the case might be, environmental factors, uh, societies, certain things cause us to slip more into an acidic environment. Well, one of those causes is really based upon the waters that we drink. Because again, when you're born, you're 90% water. As you age, it starts reducing down. Now you should be at minimum 80%, 75 to 80% water. And if 75 or 80% of your body is made up of acidic waters and acid causing situations such as eating cooked and processed foods, consuming high sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, those types of things that are causing the body to increase acid production, then our body is going to be more acidic. Now, we know, research shows, that our body functions most efficiently in a slightly alkaline environment, as I, as I said. Having worked with professional athletes in, in the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, professional hockey, uh, United States Olympics, and several other international Olympic organizations, the one thing that I have found is a common denominator is the higher the acid, the slower the recovery. And so what we want to do is anything we can do to help neutralize some of those acids. Now acid production, it's a natural process. It's going to happen. But if we can neutralize those acids at a quicker rate, we allow for a quicker recovery. The reason I bring in athletes like that is because many of you have heard me say it before. I believe that we are all athletes, but we're playing on different fields. You might be an athlete and your field is working nine to five at a law firm, okay? My point is we all want to improve our performance each and every day. And one of the things that is hindering that or those performances is an out of balance pH and increased oxidative process or oxidation going on within the body. 
So what I want to share and demonstrate for you today is a Japanese technology that creates what is referred to as Kangen water. Kangen means return to origin. Okay, this technology actually takes water, there's a filter in here, it filters it out, so it takes out all the impurities, and then it runs it over seven titanium plates. As we run electricity through there, it goes through what is called a disassociation, or a process of separating your positive ions and your negative ions. In doing so, it allows a couple of things to take place. First of all, it allows for a massive increased production or availability of molecular hydrogen, which is a fantastic antioxidant. It also allows for two different reservoirs, if you will, of um, negative ions and positive ions. And based upon how many of each of those you choose to pull from here, based upon a selection on the front of the machine, we can create a very high alkaline form of water. Or on the low end, we can create a very acidic form of water, both of which have their, vantage, uh, their advantages. Alkaline water for consumption and for alkalizing the body, acidic water for cleaning, uh, antimicrobial, antibacterial. So they both have their values. What I want to demonstrate today, though, is the value of alkaline water into our body. Enzymes that digest our food function in very specific pH ranges. Some function in a more acidic environment. Some enzymes function better in an alkaline environment. And that's why you can't just look at one or two or three enzymes. Hundreds of different enzymes function in different pHs. That pH is different throughout this GI tract. Ears, nose, throat, drain into the, into the uh, GI tract and go all the way down through the colon. There are varying different pH ranges. And at each of those ranges, enzymes and probiotics and other things function most efficiently. So I'm going to get back to that and wrap it up in the end as to how balancing the pH does in fact improve the digestion and utilization of the nutrients we consume. The digestion revolution, guys, is something that I hope you all join us in sharing and teaching about. So let's get to the demonstration. To do this, I'm just going to take a few of our most commonly consumed waters, Voss water, Aquafina. Aquafina is the number one sold bottled water in the world today. We're going to take a little bit of smart water. I'm going to demonstrate and show you, is smart water actually smart and healthy, or is it maybe something different? I'm going to take sports drinks. Here we've got some carbonated drink, uh, Sprite, and we're going to take just a little bit down here of our tap water, and finally, the water that is called Kangen water. comes out again of, of uh, this processing machine. We run the water through it and it creates what I just poured in here, a highly alkaline, highly antioxidizing form of, of water. Now why I say highly antioxidizing is because folks, antioxidants are very important. In fact, antioxidants are, are the number one over-the-counter supplement, uh, shelf sold supplement in the world. In the entire world, antioxidants are number one. Why? Because everybody wants to slow that aging process. They want to keep that youthful, happy, healthy, energetic form of, of both uh, externally and internally. And so antioxidants has proven, have proven to reduce that oxidative process. Oxidation creates that aging uh, or, or deterioration. So anti oxidation or antioxidants. So knowing how important they are, if we actually had something that was more or had a greater potential to reduce that oxidative process, even more so than say oranges or other fruits and, and vegetables, uh, even more antioxidant than say green leafy vegetables, uh, even more anti-oxidizing potential than uh, cod liver oil, you would think that was important, right? Well, that is exactly what we have, is we actually have the technology to create that highest potential to reduce that oxidative process. 
Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a, an instrument that we use to measure whether a liquid is oxidizing or whether that liquid is anti-oxidizing. Now, this is simply an instrument called an ORP meter. Why is it ORP? Oxidation Reduction Potential. This measures the potential of a liquid to either oxidize or reduce oxidation. Now, when you can see the numbers, you're going to see that they measure, when we come to our first one here, it's about a 350. Zero would be neutral. It means it's not oxidizing and it's not anti-oxidizing. The higher the positive number, the more oxidizing it is. The more it needs to rob electrons when it gets in the body to just be neutral. We can see here what about 330. Let's look at Dasani. It's a positive number. 300 and about 30, they're about the same there. They're both on the positive side though. Again, zero is neutral. 350. Let's go to smart water. Smart water, eh, it's not quite as oxidizing. It's down there at 330. Yeah, I hope you're able to, to see the numbers here a little bit. Turn them so you can see. 330. But now watch what happens when we go into, say, sports drinks. 350 and climbing. 350, probably still climbing, carbonated drinks. Carbonic acid, it is oxidizing. We're up there at 380, and that usually climbs even higher than that. 380, positive number. Tap water, I'll bet we're not as high. Tap water, 290. So we dropped quite a bit, but it's still on the positive side, right? Now, folks, I want you to keep an eye here. Because as I put it into our next one, you watch it go to a negative number. I hope you're able to see it here. It's at a negative. It'll get there. It's going down. We're going to keep going here. It'll get down there. Starting in the negative side. And as it climbs, it'll jump all the way up to a negative 2, 3, 400. It's an antioxidant, still climbing, minus 138 and climbing. And if we let that sit here a minute, I'll just leave it set for just a, just a second here. Well, you can see we're at, we're at 300 now, okay, and just continues to climb. You know, hope you're able to see the negative in front of it. It's a negative. We're at negative 360. It's going to climb. And we can always come back. Let's come back to the carbonated drinks. Back into the carbonated drink, you see it starting to drop back down. It's going to be here in the net. It's going to be back to the positive number, and then it'll climb all the way back up to a positive two or three hundred. So it's oxidizing. What does that mean? It means that it is measuring whether or not that or those liquids, back to a negative, high negative number, very anti oxidizing. Negative 355. Okay, so I hope that that helps you, helps you see a little bit of how we can measure whether a liquid is able to produce or provide that extra electron. Okay, if it has great potential to reduce that aging process, if it has great potential to reduce that, deg that uh, degrading, that uh, deterioration of us internally and externally, if it has the ability to neutralize those free radicals, or if it is the opposite. Okay, we want something that is anti-oxidizing. We want that high negative 350, high negative 400. Now, to give you a little bit of a, a relation there, oranges have about a negative 60. So yes, it's a great antioxidant, but it's only about a negative 60, which is fine, better than nothing, but it's not a negative 350. How many of you consume green tea or wheat grass, oat grass, barley grass, any of those green leafy vegetables, things like that, because they're anti-oxidizing? Guess what? They're, they're ability or their potential to reduce oxidation measures at about two, negative 200 at the most. And I just showed you again a negative 350. 
Many of them, when it comes fresh right out of, of the machine, it'll be up there negative 500, negative 550, and in some places, not here, it'll go up to a negative 600. So again, zero is neutral. Every one of these I just showed you are oxidizing. Their potential to cause the aging process is high. Anti-oxidizing potential over here, a negative number. So I, I hope that that helps you understand that the higher the negative ORP, the better off it is. The next thing that we want to talk about is the pH, okay? So I just showed you how almost every water, I'm sure you can relate to every one of these, maybe some, carbonate, or some carbonated drinks every now and then, hopefully not. Maybe you're someone that says, I don't drink carbonated drinks, but you drink a lot of bottled water, we gotta stay hydrated. Well, again, if that body is made up 75, 80% of oxidizing type water, we're gonna have the issues. So let me talk about the pH now. I told you we'd talk about the antioxidizing potential and now the pH. To do that, to demonstrate that, I'm simply going to take some pH drops. Okay, it's uh, simple drops that are used in various different industries. Uh, measuring the pH is important in the cooking industry. Uh, measuring the pH is important in the, in the pool and spa industry. Okay, we know, especially in pools, if that pH gets just slightly out of balance, we start having bacteria, uh, algae, uh, sickness, things like that growing, right, in our swimming pools or our spas. That, that pH is very important. Folks, how in the, why in the world would we be more concerned about the pH of our swimming pool or our spas than we are the pH of the water that, that makes us, that makes up the largest component of our body? So let's take a look at that. Taking these drops, and then once we drop it in there, it's going to change colors, and it will change colors, and we'll compare it in correlation to a pH chart, okay? The pH chart runs from 0 all the way up to seven, or to 14. 7 is right in the middle. 7 is neutral, means it's not acidic, it's not alkaline, it is just simply neutral, and neutral shows up as a green. Anything to the left or acidic shows up in the lighter colors, and anything alkaline shows up to the right in more of the purple. So we're gonna put just a couple, two or three drops in each one of these. And I think you're probably able to already start to see how, let's come to our imported Norwegian fantastically marketed bottled water is right in here, slightly acidic, okay? It's, it's almost green, so let's, let's give it the benefit. Let's say that it is neutral. Best case, that water is neutral, but guess what? What did I show you a minute ago with the pH chart, with the pH meter, or I'm sorry, with the ORP meter? It's oxidizing. It's not gonna help create that, that lively, energetic um, form of, of living that we want to have. So guys, let's not say, well, it's neutral, so I'm, I'm going to drink that. Let's not settle for good. We want great. Now, not even good, but more on bad. Let's take a look at the most sold water, Dasani. If we come down here, not only is it not neutral, not only is it slightly acidic, it's it's down a little bit more. So if this is seven, we're at about a five, maybe five and a half pH. Think about it. If your body is made up 80% of acidic, slightly acidic water, here, smart water, neutral, slightly acidic, but it's oxidizing, no question. Sports drinks, not only here, here, or here, it's all the way down here. Very acidic, carbonated drinks, no surprise here, all the way down here, extremely acidic. It's about a three uh, on that pH chart. Now tap water, you can see, is right here. We've got a green, maybe even slightly alkaline. So am I saying that, that uh, tap water is good? No, remember, we showed the, oh, the, the potential to reduce that oxidative process, and it was positive. But also understand that each municipality 
Because the government knows, based upon history, that even slightly acidic water that's sent through their copper pipes, their plastic pipes, their cast iron pipes, whatever kind of pipes there are, they know that even slightly acidic water deteriorates deteriorates those plastics and coppers and, and cast irons and, and, and on, on those pipes. My question is, if they know how damaging it is to those pipes, what about our pipes? What about the pipes that we're sending this water through? Guys, if we're sending acidic waters through our pipes, it's going to deter, it's going to cause some issues. So what the municipalities have to do, regulated by law, they have to add lye or another alkalizing chemical so that before it enters the pipes and is distributed all throughout the city, it is neutralized so it doesn't deteriorate the pipes. What I want is, again, I'm not going to settle for good or okay. I want something that is extremely alkalizing. Look at that beautiful purple color right there. Purple as can be, we have purple all the way up here that's very alkalizing. Not neutral, not acidic, alkalizing. Helping change the alkalinity of the body. If you've ever consumed fruits, vegetables, grains, green leafy vegetables, anything because you thought it would help because it's healthy and it's an antioxidant and it's alkalizing to the body maybe, Folks, I'm telling you, there's no easier, more effective, more efficient way than simply changing the 80% of your body. Changing something that you're going to do every day anyway, and that is drink water. If you will simply allow the ionization process, the filtration, then the ionization, that disassociation, which cre creates high alkaline water and greatest potential to reduce oxidation, that is when we're going to start seeing the most dramatic changes in our own personal health and those uh, across the country and around the world. Let me show you how powerful it is. We don't even use very much just a little bit in each one of these and it changes the acid now what happens here we can't change it that's how acidic carbonated drinks are that's how acidic sports drinks are they are so acidic that it takes approximately excuse me approximately 34 around there 30 to 35 somewhere in there equal amounts of highly alkalizing water to neutralize sports drinks, carbonated drinks, and, and things like that. So if you're someone that says, well, I'm just going to have one soda, you then have to drink at least around 30 to 35 equal amounts of highly alkaline water just to get it back to neutral. Because as you can see, adding this water in here didn't hardly touch it. Let me go one step further. For those of you that say, well, it can't be that bad, folks, let's just add one capsule or one capful, not even a full capful in there. What do we have? Turn it to acidic. Instantly, one little capful turned it acidic. Now, some of you may be saying, yeah, but the water was, you know, slightly acidic or neutral in the beginning. Let's go to high alkaline water. That is straight out of our machine. 9.5, 10.0, somewhere up in there. We're going to take one capsule again or capful, I'm sorry, in one capful, what have we done? We've taken it past neutral all the way down to acidic with one single capful of carbonated beverage. Folks, acidic drinks. If you're one that believes carbonic acid and the, the car carbonation and carbonated drinks and sh those high sugars and the fructose corn syrups, if you're one that thinks those are damaging to the body, you're 100% right. And the reason is because they are extremely acidic. We've got to change that. We have to bring forth this revolution and help people understand that we can make a difference. And it starts with balancing the body's pH. Now, how does that tie together with the digestion revolution? It starts with this. When our body gets out of balance with the pH, it starts affecting 
the digestion or utilization of the nutrients we consume. Now, any of you that have heard me speak, you know that my platform is that nutrient utilization is more important than just nutrient consumption. Just because you consume healthy nutrients does not mean your body can utilize them until it is digested. So when we have indigestion or the inability to digest, when we have acid reflux, when we have heartburn, when we have GERD's disease, when we have uh, ulcer or, uh, um, ulcers and things like that, that is an imbalance of the pH. That is caused from too much acid. That's right, too much acid. Now, the reason I put emphasis on that is because we're now seeing research and experts coming out saying, no, 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 no. We're seeing these issues when there's not enough acid. Too little acid in the stomach, that's what's causing the real problem. The key word there is what is causing the problem. We see that by consuming cooked and processed foods, consuming foods that are enzyme void, causes the body to secrete acid in the stomach. Secrete, 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 secrete. Now all of a sudden the acid starts to get up there because it had to compensate for the lack of enzymes. Now all of a sudden that's followed up by anti-acids. Remember, 60 billion dollars, with a B, 60 billion dollar a year industry just on antacids. So acid goes up, we put antacids in, acid goes down. We start taking antacids, we start consuming things like Pepto-Bismol and Tums and Maalox, we start consuming the, the purple pills and the things like that, suppressing that acid, eventually over a period of time, our body starts saying, man, you have caused me so often, so many times a day for so long to secrete, secrete, secrete acid and then suppress. Secrete, secrete, secrete acid and then suppress. That I can't keep producing it. And I'm to the point where I just simply can't produce enough even to digest, even to allow the activation of that pepsin enzyme that is required for digestion. So that's where the results are now coming in saying, wait, it's from, it's from not enough acid. I believe, and I think there's adequate research that shows the not enough acid is a symptom or a, what has been caused by the massive influx instability of acid causing scenarios, emotional stress, physical stress, cooked and processed foods, sugars, high fructose corn syrups, so many different things that cause the body to over secrete and eventually run down to the point that we can't secrete enough. It's a symptom, not the problem. The problem is our balance of pH is, is not in order. We are functioning in, a, in an acidic environment. We should be functioning in an alkaline environment. Folks, this is just the first part of a full series of webinars that are going to be talking about increasing digestion. That are going to be talking about the various other ways that living an alkaline lifestyle, starting with Kangen water, starting with alkalizing, antioxidizing, highly hydrating form of water that can change your body and your life. We hope that you join us each and every Tuesday night. Make it, make it, a, 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 uh, make it a date every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock um, our time, 9 o'clock Eastern. I'm on the West Coast. As I close out tonight, I want to, on behalf of my, my family, my wife, my three children, my company, we'd like to thank you for inviting us into your home tonight and allowing us to share something that we're very passionate about and that we're going to continue to teach and educate and even learn ourselves. But we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it lightly. We're going to continue to work hard on your behalf. We thank you so much for your continued support. 
We look forward to hopefully meeting you in person someday. And until that day, we hope that God blesses you and your family.